When I started working on this video, I thought this is just going to be a teardown. We're going to rip this piece of equipment apart and it's never going back together and it's just going to go in the trash bin because, you know, it's, it was scrap. And then as I got into it, I thought maybe we can get this thing working. After all, what's a little salt water going to do to damage it, right? Let's see if we can get this working. So I have a Canon zoom lens. Let's see if I can fix this one. I think I'll do a video today to get generate as many thumbs down as possible because I'm going to have people crying. I'm going to take this nice Canon lens and I'm going to take it apart. Yeah, let's throw this thing around a bit and just get everybody upset. Uh, this lens is kind of fun. Pardon my French. But uh, this one here, the reason that this lens is going to be taken apart is because it's broken. You see the, I don't know if you can see down the lens or not there. Can you guys see through that? Can you see through that or not? Uh, anyway, when I turn the iris, you can see the iris is not opening and closing on here. And, and the auto iris doesn't work as well. And the reason for that is because this lens has had salt water in it. So this lens is kind of foobarred beyond repair. So I thought, what a great one to take apart. We'll just use the little itty bitty screwdriver and we'll take all these little itty bitty screws out and and probably not put this thing back together. But let's see what was in. <sighs> well, at least that works on my phone. You know, we had this uh, Canadian provincial um, test today that they that they did for the second time. You know, this is to alert us of missiles coming in or tsunamis or earthquakes or you know the whole bit. And uh, they did it last summer and half the people's phones didn't work. And so I got two phones in my pocket. I got my company work phone, which is a Samsung Galaxy S8. And I've got my personal phone, which is also a Samsung, it's a, an S9. And you know, at 155 today, eh, 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 my work phone goes off, my other phone doesn't. They're both sitting within a foot of each other. So I think the, uh, the test was another fail. Let's take this screw out here and take this little plate off and what we'll see in here is we'll see a little motor. This is the, uh, I guess that's probably the zoom. Uh, it could be the, uh, no it might be the, uh, I don't know this one might not have a servo zoom on it. That's the motor for the iris. This, 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 this particular lens, this is one that you would uh, attach a, a gear to it uh, and a cable drive. This one was fully manual. So this is going to be the iris control. This is probably what's all frozen up on this. Let's take out a few more screws here. I wonder if I can take this piece off. Maybe not. Anyway, let's take out these screws and we'll see what what's in one of these lenses. I have a feeling that I've got a visitor in here too. I just heard a little bell ring, so I have a feeling that there's a cat that's decided to come and visit me. wonder if he'll jump up on the bench. If in doubt, remove all the screws. But it didn't have it didn't have uh, power zoom. It was a manual zoom camera only. These same type of lenses were used on on uh, studio type cameras, where the operator had to crank, and there was a a little gear was screwed on here, and it went to a cable that they could zoom it. But uh, this one here was this what this came from a I guess it was a home camera of some type, but it was a Toshiba. But the uh, iris is all buggered up on it. And this cover should come off. And if it doesn't, we'll get the helper out. Or maybe I can borrow Big Clive's x-ray machine.
The reason I'm so interested in getting this stupid cover off is this is probably where it's jammed. Oh yeah, it is. It's really jammed. Like, I think what happened on this is water got into this. You can see. I don't know if you can. Maybe you can't see. I hold it up over the lens. Okay, you see? I, this is all jammed up with the iris. The, the, the iris blades inside here are just um, not wanting to move. Let's uh, take this lens apart a little more. We'll take some screws out. There's a bunch of them here. Pretty sure I hear a cat in here. Okay, I got all those screws out. I think this should. Uh, Apart. I'll unscrew this. Well, there's the back side of the lens off, and an adapter. Now this is where they, this is a C mount lens, so obviously if it was if the lens was going to be a different type of lens, they would put a different adapter on. But there's a C mount adapter, which is totally useful for something, I'm sure. Next we've got uh, a couple more screws. In case you guys are wondering, the, the camera that this came out of is long gone. It was recycled a long time ago. off like that. And there's more screws here. This should take the iris apart. These screws. The spring's already falling out of this thing. And not advisable to take apart a camera lens, right? At least one that's working. If it's broken, then don't worry about it. This one here, as I say, I was going to throw this thing out, but I thought before tossing it, it might be kind of cool just to see what's inside one of these things. How many elements there are. This is not an expensive lens, right? It's not a real high-end one, but... So there's the zoom lens. This is the iris, and this is where it's this is where it's going to be jammed. You can actually see if we look at the, you can see where it's contaminated hate on this this. And I've actually repaired these lenses before. Like I've taken lenses apart that have been that have had the iris jammed. One of the the problems that used to happen happen on a camera, lots of camcorders. This would happen on. So I've actually taken these apart and repaired them. The only reason I'm not going to repair this one is I don't really have a camera that I could put it on. Well, I guess I 
could put it on a camera, I could repair it, but if we take this plate out here, we'll find that you see what's on here is contamination. What often happened on these five blade uh, shutter irises, and uh, these were the good ones, a lot of uh, cam co consumer camcorders went to two blades, but uh, what happened very often on these was uh, if someone left their camera, say, sitting in the back window of their car, what would happen is the lubricant inside the lens that's used to lubricate the the zoom and so forth and this will actually unscrew that's the focus but uh, anyway the the lubricant that was inside the lens would melt and from the heat and it would drip down and get onto the iris control motor and the the uh, on the iris itself you can see you can see it here on the inside here so then what happens is the uh, lens gets stuck stuck open or stuck closed or stuck at some point normally when this is working what happens is the iris control motor here moves this back and forth like that and that's what opens and closes the blades being these things and these blades sit on this pivot like this and all the blades just they all sit the same way so the blades all sit you need patience to put these things together and people wonder why when I fix their lenses it costs so bloody much when I was working on their camcorder they'd be like what 150 bucks to fix the lens and say yeah would you like me to put a new lens on <laughs> it cost you more than that for a new lens But I, I, I did lots of these things over the years. I hated it. I, I never ever enjoyed taking a lens apart and having to fix it because some idiot uh, left their camcorder sitting in their car in the summer sun. You know, right? Especially when the destruction manual said, do not leave your camera in a hot place. Because if you do, you're going to end up with a, a lens that's going to be damaged. From the heat but uh, you know it's nobody nobody reads them it's the same as it's the same as the people that that take their cameras to the beach they put it on their beach towel the beach towel is not going to stop sand from getting in it or they take the camera out on a boat and wonder why it doesn't work when salt water gets in it and these people were always the ones that would complain and whine the most. I put that together wrong. It goes on the other side of the spring, if I'm not mistaken, because that's what pulls it shut. It's shut and that's open. Okay, now the iris blades are going to be closed. Now that they've got this thing in the right position. And these actually are not plastic, they're actually very thin metal. I thought they were plastic at first, but they're not because they're magnetic. See?
<sighs> it's frustrating because when you get one piece in, the next one just drops out. Two of them in. Now you understand why the, a lot of the manufacturers went to the, uh, the two blade shutter as opposed to the five blade because the two blade is much easier to uh, assemble. And there's fewer moving parts in it to get gummed up like the five blade. Well, that's roughly how it works. I just knocked it out of position again. Ah! Uh, this is how it goes in. This is in its groove. These are all the right order, but I just got to get them back onto their posts, and that's the biggest pain in the butt is getting these all back onto their posts and keeping them there long enough to put the piece back together. And now you know why it costs so bloody much to get one of these things fixed. You had to take a lens apart. First of all, you actually had to take the lens out of the camera because consumer cameras, as a rule, did not have a lens that just unscrewed from the front of the camera. No, no, no. You had to take the camera apart, take the lens off the sensor, take the lens apart, fix it, and put it back together. And then reassemble the whole thing. Big time job. A lot of work involved with it. That's why a lot of shops wouldn't do this. They'd just say, no, you need a new lens. It's going to be 400 bucks. And they change the whole lens because to take the amount of time to take the lens apart and fix it was, uh, you know, time is money. Nobody wants to waste this amount of time to change the lens. But I did fix lots of them because I could do this for half the cost of changing the lens. And time-wise, 
you still had to take the camera apart to take the lens off and put it back on. So an extra hour to actually repair the lens as opposed to take it apart, diagnose the lens problem, put it together, order the lens in. When the lens came in, take the camera apart again, change the lens. Did it all in one, all in one go and uh, made a fair bit of money doing this. So I actually got quite good at taking apart these lenses. Then the manufacturers came out with a lens which the iris and the iris motor was an actual assembly. You just took out two screws and you just slid the iris assembly out. And there was like three screws that held it together and it was just a two blade iris. And those ones were a piece of cake. You could fix those ones in like five minutes because there was only the two blades. One that slid one way and the other one slid the other way. And those ones are a piece of cake to repair. But these five blade ones better light control and a better effect you get the nice bead of when you got the sun on the lens you get the nice um you know the the nice uh, octagon um or sorry pentagon type of um uh, a, a light, light beading down the lens looked a lot better than the diamond shape which was the which was common with the two blade shutter better light control um and better effect but as you can see Hell of a lot more work when it comes time to fixing one. Kind of like that. Okay, I'm going to uh, put this on the camera. I'm not going to put all the screws back into this thing. Let's just uh, put this thing on a camera and see whether it will work. It should work in this state right now, even with the, with the housing and stuff off it. I shouldn't have to put all that back on. The, uh, the lens is back together, so... I just put a couple of screws in here to hold the thing from unscrewing. Let me go dig up a camera that this will work on. And we'll uh, hook it up and see what it does. I'm going to put it onto the Sony uh, DXC1800. Yeah, and it works. This camera doesn't work very well, but I'll show you the image on the screen. As I say, this camera doesn't work very well at all. <laughs> and all that noise that you see here, that noise is actually from the plasma screen itself. The same noise that was getting into my beta machine is getting into this. So there's the, the lens. Can zoom in here. Focus. There's the manual iris control, and if I plug the, of course it's lead is too short to plug in. Yeah, the lead's too short to put it on auto iris on this camera. But as you can see, the manual iris works fine. 
Like if I probably turn this lens a bit, it'll affect my focus, but now it'll reach. Okay, now I should be able to put this thing into auto iris. Where are we here? Oh, now it's in auto. See, I can, I'm adjusting the iris control and it's not doing anything because the camera is in auto iris. If I unplug it, now I can control the lens manually. When I plug it in, now it's on auto iris. Doesn't matter where I turn the iris control, I'm in auto iris mode now. But in order to plug this thing in, I actually have to back the lens off a little bit, so I'm losing my focus a bit. If I unplug the lens, go back to manual iris, now I can properly focus on this thing, on this chart. This is the Sony lens, the one that's, that came with the camera. As you can see, the, the the lead is much longer, and this one's got a motorized zoom on it, whereas this other one's just a strictly manual zoom. And yeah, this camera is uh, has seen better days, that's for sure. I'm dimming down the lights here a bit because I want you guys to see a phenomenon that is apparent on Sony cameras. We gaze down into the lens. Ooh, there's red in that camera. You'll see the bias light inside the lens. That's something that you'll see on all Sony cameras. And see the bias light. That's because Sony don't use the light pipes. Sony don't use the uh, the lights at the back of the tube. Oh no, Sony. If I unscrew the lens here, they actually illuminate the front of the tube, as you can see. There's the bias light shining on front of the the tube as you can see the tube on this camera is shot that's uh, capped up completely there's no light at all and that's just me moving my hand near the front of the camera. The, the noise from this plasma screen is so high that it's causing those bands. But uh, that is not... That's the same noise that was affecting that uh, VCR that I was working on. Was, uh, was that. Now we're back to the original lens on this one. You can see how loose this is. This lens is loose itself. The lens is loose. This lens is broken. And, uh, well, this camera is bagged anyway, because, I mean, the, the tube's got a nice big burn, a permanent burn. In it, that's probably why the camera was given to me. It almost looks like uh, it almost looks like you know, cap it up here with the lens cap. That almost looks like a light, a studio light barn door. Almost looks like the camera got po this came from a studio. This camera was given to me, but it looks like it was. Uh, it was left with the light blasting into it. Oh well.
I'll take this Tamron lens apart. This is the one that was on this camera. This mount is loose. I'm just wondering if I can tighten that up. Well, I've got it here. where it's loose right there. That screw is what's holding it. We'll just uh, we'll just tighten it up. Don't I don't feel like getting a hex key. That'll hold it. There. Now it's not loose anymore. There's actually a second hex key over here too. Could have done that without taking this apart if I'd known that was what was loose on it. Oh well, I'll put this back together now. Oh, that's a little better. I mean, the lens, the focus part of the lens is still a bit loose, but the whole lens isn't falling apart like before, and I'm not getting all the noise that I was getting before on it. It's looking a little better, complete with all the, except for this stupid plasma. Now, you see, if I plug this into my CRT monitor, all this noise. This banding there is going to go away. I'll show you what I mean. See what I mean? All that banding. My chair you're looking at there. All that banding that was uh, there before is gone on the CRT monitor. Other than the fact you can you can see the uh, you can see the lines in the in the aperture grill on the CRT monitor on this little camera because the resolution is so high. But all of that, uh, all that interference is gone. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed looking at uh, this lens for what it's worth and even the inside of this lens, tightening this one up, making this one look a little better. At least this camera is, uh, well, I mean, it's not really usable because it's got a big burn on the tube, but at least the lens itself isn't uh, falling apart like it was before. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one real soon.